In this lesson, we'll cover the Revit MEP interface. So when you open a project inside of Revit, you'll basically see a ribbon with a variety of tabs, and on those tabs will be panels containing various commands for Revit MEP. We'll start out by looking at the various tabs that you may have inside of your Revit version of MEP. Now, depending upon the flavor of Revit that you have, you may see all the tabs that you see in this video, or you may see more, or you may see less. Mostly for this course, we'll focus on the tab called Systems. This tab contains all of the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing functions that we'll cover in this course. So looking at the Systems tab first, we start off on the left with an HVAC panel. Here we have functions to create duct, duct holders, flexible tubing, and terminals or mechanical equipment for our duct systems. We then have the capability to create fabrication parts. From there, we have mechanical equipment, and then our plumbing and piping capabilities to run pipe, piping and plumbing fixtures, including sprinklers. Then we have a condensed menu for electrical. Now, depending upon your screen resolution, your screen may be expanded so you see this in its full entirety. Here though, for electrical, you can create your wiring, your conduit, your cable trays, and insert your electrical equipment. The tab after that will allow us to insert or bring in components into our Revit model. And the last dropdown is basically a setup area where we can create references, such as planes. Now the other tabs that are visible in this version of Revit, starting on the very left, are architecture. On the architecture tab, you have various commands to create architectural elements, such as walls, doors, windows, ceilings, floors, and you have a variety of different tools to control those architectural elements as well. The next tab over is structure. This is predominantly part of the Revit structure program. Here, you can use structural elements to build your model, such as structural walls, structural columns, beams, braces, trusses, you can place footings, you can create slabs, and reinforcement for those structural members. The tab after systems is insert. This is where we can link in additional CAD files or import in other CAD data. You can also manage images and group elements. The tab after that is annotate, basically adding all of your text and dimensions to your different views. You also can check your text dimensions and you can also place tags. After that is Analyze. This basically lets you run analytics against your MEP model, basically checking your systems or your loads for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. You can also look at different schedules. You can run different tests, such as pressure tests for your ductwork and for your piping. All the way to the right is the Energy Analysis tools, where you can run that in Energy Analysis against your different systems. The tab after that is Massing and Site. The first part of the tab is primarily conceptual design, where you may not know the overall layout of your building, but you know the basic shape, a rectangle, cube, a cylinder. And from there, you can divide that cube up or that cylinder up into floors or walls. The middle part of this ribbon is actually for creating site components, such as topography, or site lines, or you can create property lines, regions, surfaces, and you can insert site components, trees, cars, parking lots. The tab after that is Collaborate. This is if you're working in a collaborative environment. For example, we're using Revit MEP, but I may be working with two other people, and one of those other people may be using Revit Structure, and the other one may be using Revit Architecture. Well, all three of us want to work on one Revit model, and we want to collaborate. So this tab allows us to set up the collaboration, monitor the collaboration, and track the history of what each person's doing. The tab after that is the View tab. This tab basically allows us to create all of the different types of views, so our floor plans, our ceiling plans, our 3D views, and really it's basically a camera looking at your 3D model. The tab after that is Manage. This allows us to manage all of the settings for our Revit project. So our information, our materials, the location of this actual building, the time and day if we want to run certain seasonal studies. 
We also have all of the controls for the Revit program here. In the last tab is the Modify tab. This is all of your basic Revit fundamental modify commands, such as move, copy, rotate, paste, align. Now, other than the ribbon, the other parts of the Revit window include the main drawing area, or where your model is at. Over on the left is the property area. The property area shows you the properties of whatever you click. If you don't click anything, meaning if you just click in the white background, it shows the property of the view, or that active view. Below that is the project browser. This shows all of the views in this current Revit model. If you scroll down, you can also see legends, schedules, reports, sheets, families, and groups. Now that's providing it's all loaded into your Revit project. Families, if I expand those, are basically all of the components you can use to place within your Revit model. Now back out into the window area where your main model is at. On the very bottom of the screen, the toolbar you see contains all of the controls to control the view or detail of the model. So I can look at the detail, meaning I can see more detail of the walls or the systems. I can look at shadows. I can turn shadows on and off. I can hide elements. I can turn elements back on. Below that, on the very bottom of Revit, is the status bar. Predominantly, it shows us the status of the current model or the status of a user inside of a work group or a shared environment. On the right is the view cube. The view cube allows us to click on the cube, holding the left mouse button down to rotate the model, or clicking on an edge, a corner, a side, or using the rotational ring to reorient the model. The little house takes you back to the default home view. The very top of the Revit window on the left is the quick launch bar. This allows us to quickly open, save, undo, redo, and check various settings. The large R in the upper left allows us to do the same thing, but it also contains the Options button, where we can set the various options for Revit MEP. And lastly, the toolbar in the upper right is the Help toolbar, where you can search for help on commands or how-tos or connect to Autodesk 360. So as a review, this lesson covered and looked at the Revit MEP interface. We talked about the various tabs and commands on the ribbon, the model area, the property area, project browser, various toolbars, and the status bar, view cube, and quick launch icons.